Well, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for coming back. <laughs> I'm so, thrilled to be here. Well, I thought if we could just, you could recount some of the stories and the, kind of like the history and everything you can remember okay. about the house All and right. your times with the house. And then after you t kind of tell us some of that, t tell us a little about any of the supernatural experiences you would have had here. Because you had to have a few. Well, how can you differ differentiate that from the house? Because the house had it when we came here. Sarah was here. <laughs> <laughs> we had purchased a home in Boxford, Mass, and then we found out it had a double title. And we had a horse, and we had the three boys, and we had furniture, and we had to be out of our house in New Jersey. And, and there was advertised Edgar Allan Poe Vintage Home in Hampton Falls, and we could move in in two weeks. Yeah. <laughs> so we, we drove by, and we drove by again. And then we we said, well, this must be the place, you know, where we'll where we'll be. So we we closed up the home in in Reddington, New Jersey, which was a an old home too. It was a pre-revolutionary 1775 home. It was the main tavern from Harrisburg to New York. So I, we were sort of used to old homes, but we were not used to the grandeur of this home. But we drove up, and it was 2.30 in the morning. We didn't have a key to get in. We were to close the next day. We didn't have a place to sleep. So my husband had my son, seven years old, lowered him through the mm -hmm. basement window. And we didn't know that there was that well down the basement, that open well. Yeah, yeah. And yeah. he had to find his way up the stairs <laughs> to the door yeah. and, and open open the door, so that was our first, and we walked in and we said, oh, you don't believe it. But anyway, there was this piano, and it was over in this corner here. And so the first thing I said, well, we'll have the piano tuned. So we got a piano tuner, and I had a little boy, Scott, and he was home with me, he hadn't started school yet, and I was outside uh, painting, trying to cheer up the place a little bit. <laughs> and. Uh, the piano tuner came out and he said, I can't tune the piano. And I said, well, why can't you? And he said, because this ghost came down the stairs and stood right by me at the piano. And the minute I'd get something done, she'd undo it. Good. And I said, oh, Mr. Ransom. <laughs> so he, and he was, he was in the clergy of some church. I said, I can't believe it. He said, that's it. If you don't pay me, he never came back. <laughs> never came back. So well, I didn't... Did he describe the ghost at all? Yes. She was old. She was friendly. She was very sad. And um, she just came down and said, I said, well, I didn't want to doubt him. <laughs> I didn't know anything about a ghost or anything like that. The next day, I, well, the boys came home from school the next day, and they said, Mom, have you heard? We have a ghost in the house. And I, so I, I just tried to put her down a little bit because I thought, well, I don't want the kids being scared. But then I found out that um, True Sarah Brown had, I think she was, had money or something, and she had built a home for her husband to be governor of the state of of New Hampshire, and there are any, even postcards that said, Honorable Governor Warren Brown. And there was some, there's a rock out here, where in the pasture, have you seen that rock? No, I'm trying to find it gigantic. actually. Gigantic, it was a gigantic rock. And uh, anyway, that's where they, they had this photo of this, of, uh, of this rock, and then he was to be the governor. Well, he lost the election. So I think she was sad about that. She would have the the girls from um, Ireland, you know, they'd come over from Ireland and they'd come to Boston, and then she'd hire them, you know, to, to work in the home. So um, I didn't do anything, but then we had a dinner party and we were just sitting around the table laughing about, you know, maybe a ghost and just telling this funny thing about the piano. And all of a sudden I thought, oh, the boys have fallen out of the third floor of falling out. Crash, boom, bang. And uh, we all jumped up and went into the front parlor 
and my husband being a chemical engineer, you just don't put a nail in the wall and put a picture on it. You know, it has to be very, very systematic and everything and all the proper equipment. Well, the picture had been lifted off the mantle, crashed to the floor. The sconces were crashed to the floor. We just couldn't believe it. And we had three couples, and one of the couples said, uh, one of the men said to his wife, don't put your hand in my pocket. Well, she was on the other side of the room. <laughs> <laughs> he never came. All these people that have these experiences, they never came back again. <laughs> he wouldn't come back. He wouldn't come back again in the, in the home. So after that, I thought, well, I'm not going to fool around with this lady. If she's here, she's here, and I better be friends with her. So any time anything happened, you know, I said, oh, Sarah, you know, why did you do that? Mm -hmm. Now, like, we had some things in the attic, and they were moved from one place to the other place. I don't think the boys did it. I mean, you know, finding these, these white, old white buck shoes, um, we finally took those to the Hampton Falls dump and had them burned <laughs> because they kept showing up in all these different places that we didn't know, you know, where they put them here, and then two weeks ago they'd be, you know, in some noticeable place but a different place. So um, then, uh, you know, we moved in, we, things started calming down a little bit, but then we had a young man, very handsome young man, and he asked one weekend if he could stay in our home while we were away. And I said, oh, that's great, just, you know, if you'll feed the dog. We went to Washington, D.C. And uh, so when we came back on Sunday night, no, Rob Thorpe, he was gone. <laughs> and uh, so two days later he came back and he said, I'm sorry, oh, and there was a dog dish out on the back and the dog, you know, was, was there. And he said, I had the strangest experience. He had only told me this on the lawn. The strangest experience I've ever had. He said, I came home 11 o'clock, went up to this bedroom, and that was Gertrude's bedroom, that up in the back hall there, um, you know, back of your room. Mm -hmm. That's where she was. He said, I got, I just robed, got into bed, and all of a sudden there was this girl, young girl about 19, standing at the foot of the bed. And she was starting to disrobe. And he said, I got out of there so fast, <laughs> and he would never come back. He, he would never. So we just said, well, that must have been Gertrude, you know. She was unfulfilled, and she saw this hand. <laughs> well, so, I haven't seen a naked Gertrude. That's something with, keep your eye out, Justin. Here she is. <laughs> so anyway, um, so, but you know, as time went on, and we lived, and we enjoyed the house, we saw less and less of Sarah or things happening because, um, you know, our boys grew up here and their friends came here and everything was, was fine. Uh, however, one Christmas Eve, I remember it, we heard this rush and Dave came down the stairs and these front doors, which never could open, they had just blown open and all the leaves were in the front hall. And then my husband, who never gets frightened, <laughs> that really gave him the willies. But our last, final, really last, and the boys have all had different experiences, but the last one that I was involved in, um, we were sitting in the kitchen table, and I said to our daughter Jody, I said, Jody, you go upstairs and would you please get some sugar? So I, we stored our sugar up there with the squirrels. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> And she said, I'm not going to go up to that attic with a ghost. And my son John said, now look, Jody, this is what you do. You go up there in the top of the stairs of the attic, and you say, I don't believe in ghosts. And just as she said that, the crystal bowl on the table shattered. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and she said, I don't care what you say. I still believe in ghosts. And John said, I do too. I do too. <laughs> so that was, that was like the final thing that Sarah said, look, I'm still in charge, you know, and don't doubt me because I can pull lots of tricks. But uh, since that time, I have heard that, uh, you know, a ghost is, is someone who has unfinished business. You know,
know, and as we uh, lived in the house and, and the owners came back, we had a party once where the whole family came back. Of course, it didn't look like this. And, and they were thrilled that the home wasn't torn down. And I think that's it, the Brown family. Uh -huh, the Brown Browns, family. Yeah. And I think that would have happened, you know, if, if we had taken it over because it was all, it was vacant during the 60s. So there were lots of, you know, of hippies that came in and out because they wouldn't let them sleep at the beach. And um, so they would come in, you know, there was paint and, and there was some destruction, you know, to the house because they, they slept here and they stayed here. Um, it was difficult the first two or three years because they would come back. You know, and I said, no, I'm sorry, this is a private home now, yeah. <laughs> you know, and, but they'd be lined up on that porch. It was a long walk from the porch to the back door. <laughs> I'd say, this is, you know, this is a private residence now. Oh, do you know about the hanging in the windmill? Do you know about this and, and the rocking chair and all that, those things? What's the hanging in the windmill? Oh, they said there was a hanging in the windmill. Who said that? The hippies? The hippies did. So I, I didn't. No, you didn't. They didn't give you any more information on the hanging in the windmill. No. Oh, okay. And then the the chair, the rocking chair that never stopped rocking in there. Um, the rocking and I just in the windmill. That, there was a rocking yeah. chair that never stopped rocking. And I just thought, well, this is you know their imagination, and I didn't want to <laughs> be involved with it because um, you know Dave traveled, and I didn't want to be home with these three boys, you know, with a with a ghost or a scary ghost. But as far as I concerned, uh, Sarah was a nice person. She had she just had a lot of dreams that were unfulfilled, and um, you know she must have been quite a good businesswoman. Uh, so um, those are my I have happy memories of her. <laughs> you know, she was she was an okay person. Um, and uh, do you have any other questions? <laughs> what else can we What else can we talk about? So that was good. Uh, so the house, so the house, and your memories of the house are intertwined with the supernatural yes, experiences. They are. They the, are. Hi, the high points of your memories are really with the supernatural stuff. Right. That's right. interesting. Uh, so let me share with you some of mine and see if they make sense. How about that? Okay. Okay. So when we first came here, uh, I had a uh, assistant, not an assistant. I had, well, I had a, a guy that worked for me, and. I heard voices in the upstairs hallway. So you know where the two closets are in the hallway? Uh -huh, uh -huh. I heard voices, a conversation, just like you and I would be having a conversation, but I couldn't make out what they were saying. It was a man and a woman talking back and forth and have no idea what they said, but and Michelle, Michelle and Didier at the time, that was his, his name, would come from downstairs. They weren't up there. Did you ever hear any voices or anything like that up on the second floor or anything you couldn't identify? It could have been uh, Sarah talking to Warren. Or, um, you know, I didn't hear, I didn't hear voices as I can, as I can really remember, but my son and his girlfriend did. They were coming up this, these back stairs and they heard voices up there. Okay, good. So that, that comes together. Good. That, that Very good. Yeah. I'm sure. You know, yeah. Oh, good. Because frightened, it, yeah. Frightened him too, actually. Right. Because you, know. you could, I mean, you could distinctly hear the voices, and uh -huh. I mean, you could, there's just no. There was a conversation going on, but there was no one who was around to, to have that conversation. Well, I think a, a lot of it depends on, you know, the hereafter and here. I mean, they say the veil is very thin. I, I mean, I told my ghost story, but I heard people say, "Oh, yeah, my grandfather, you know, he." came back and, and you know, I don't, I, I'm, I'm no authority on any of this, but it's just what you Well, George, why feel. don't you tell her what you know about <laughs> No, so, well, well, that, so that's good because I'm, well, what I'd like to see is like validation, like just if you know, uh -huh. like even if you're, you know, David or one of your kids talked about like some of the stuff that's happened to me. So to have like, oh yes, they, right. yeah, they mentioned it and what have you. So that was, that was one of them. And then probably the, the biggie that really started a lot of the, the quest here for looking at the supernatural mm -hmm. was when a little boy ran past me in this hallway. It was right here, ran up the stairs and opened the door to the back of the house where the hired girls room would be, opened it, shut it, and ran down the hallway. The boy was dressed with a white shirt and blue pants, 
I thought it was my son. I just assumed it was my son because uh -huh. it was a solid entity. It was solid. Just like I'm looking at you, I, I could see him out of the corner of my eye as I was using the bathroom and didn't think twice of it. And I went back in the back room. Where we, we, we finished it. We can watch mm -hmm. TV in there. And he's in there sleeping, but he has red pajamas on. Oh, my goodness. And I was convinced it was him that somehow played a trick on me until it was just like, you have red pajamas on, you couldn't have done it. And he was dead asleep because I couldn't shake him out of his sleep because he didn't, he wouldn't, he would have smiled if I, uh -huh. if I tried waking him up and he was, was, you know, faking it. So I left there and I went upstairs and looked, trying to, who the hell's in my house? I couldn't find him. Couldn't find oh. him. But I know what I saw, that he was solid. I mean, as solid as you or I, and just went up the stairs and literally shook the steps as he went upstairs. It could have been one of Sarah's children. Yeah, no, I think it was a little boy. One of hers. No, not one of hers, but the hired girl. Oh. So we have the hired girl's room. Oh, yeah. Yes, so the hired girl. She, she tried to keep the hired men away from the hired girls. Right, but well, supposedly what happened was that Warren got close to the hired girl. Oh, and that was... Makes sense. It does. Yeah. Warren, even back then. Mm -hmm. <laughs> even back then. Yeah, I can I can understand I can understand that. So Because one of the first seances we had here was a woman who's a trans medium. Uh -huh. And what that is, that's what a, you have a medium who channels the spirits through right. her. Which I thought and I'm, I was an atheist. Still really I'm on a quest, but I was still really she was just too out there for me to, to really mm -hmm. latch on to because it was just too dramatic for me. Right. Because she'd be talking like you and I, then she'd start shaking, and all mm -hmm. of a sudden the spirit would talk to her. And she brought, the first person she brought through was Bridget with an, from Ireland. And she was one of the hired. She was, the, in reading the Sunnyside Files, yes. Bridget is the, the right arm of Sarah. She was the oh. first. Help, the first uh, person for Sarah. So she was her head maid or head helper oh, or whatever. Yes. That was, she brings through Bridget. Well now, in retrospect, that was wonderful. But back then it was just because I was such a skeptic that I couldn't latch on to it. But it's amazing, once reading the books, it's all yes. of a sudden she, and she would have had no knowledge of it because I had no knowledge of it, to bring that through and create some kind of hoax. So she legitimately brought through this Irish woman. And it was amazing. I mean, when you think about that in perspective, it's like, wow, that's, uh, that's something. So when she came over initially, and I've had numerous mediums here, they all go to the back room, which is kind of like, remember the back bedroom yes. you had, way, way in the back? No, it, it was what? the laundry room. Yeah, no, that wasn't the one. The laundry room was the first room, the hired boy's room. And then after that was the bedroom, uh -huh. right? You had the laundry and the, and the, the hired mm -hmm. boy's room, then the hired girl's room had the bedroom. Uh -huh. With a little bed in it and so forth. Right. Yeah. And every medium goes to that room. They don't know anything. They gravitate to that room and say a child was killed in this room. Really? All of them. 100%. Boom. Right, take, go right to that room. I can't, oh my God, I can feel it. The child was killed in this room. He was smothered. 100%. It's just un unbelievable when they come in. They gravitate to that room for that child. So that fits together with the Bridget. It fits together with the little boy yes. going up my stairs and down my hallway as being a solid oh. entity going going there. Oh my goodness. And then also the the land in the back, there were two houses. That a, there's an old well way, way out in the back. I didn't know about the well. I knew there was a barn right over here. No, not that not this oh. close, but way where the new development oh, is. Really? There's an old well out there that's one of the boundaries for two other houses out there. They, that's one of the landmarks that, that separates the lots. Uh -huh. And supposedly the little boy who was killed was raised from history and buried by a well. And I talked to one of the mothers who's in that, one of the homes out there, the brand new houses. Uh -huh. And I don't even know how we got in the conversation, but she, she goes, you have any ghosts or something like that or something? And she goes, I have a ghost. And she's saying to me that she saw the ghost on her baby cam. They're in the kitchen, her and her mother. They saw something walk in front of the baby cam. They could see the, the person. And they saw the little baby pointing at, at the person. And they went up there like, oh, my God, someone's in the room with the kid. Yes. And no one was there. But oh. she described my little boy. Oh, my goodness. Then the woman just on the other side of her 
I happen to be speaking with, and she has a ghost in her upstairs hallway that she sees walking down the hallway, a little boy dressed with a white shirt, blue pants, that she's seen walking down the hallway. She's also seen it when she's combing her hair in the mirror, looking at her, just watching her comb her hair. So, so the little boy, I feel pretty comfortable. He's he here is. and he's wanting to be known. So, He makes us, uh, himself known. He, he makes himself known. He wants to be known. And then my daughter and I both saw the little boy run down and run into the kitchen and disappear like where the old door would have been right up by the wood stove. We saw him and just like disappeared. Just, and we both looked at each other and she goes, that wasn't Zach, my son. And I go, no, that wasn't Zach. And she, she thought I was nuts up until then. That was when she was 14. But she didn't think I was nuts anymore no. because she saw him. And then she saw him a couple days later with me. And then she saw him once on her own I walking wonder, across. I wonder if he gravitated to you because he wanted a father figure. Yeah, I don't know. I, there's, there's some connection between he and I that I'm still exploring. So... I mean, there's a, he's always with me. And I'll go to a medium or something like that, and they'll talk about the little boy that follows me and, and all that. So he's always with me. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. Dressed in blue. But he still, does he always have that blue outfit? I've never seen him in anything else. White shirt, blue pants. White shirt, blue pants. Yeah. Never anything different. Now, down here, we have Gertrude, uh -huh. around age 12, playing the piano. Now, did you ever hear the piano play on its own or anything like that? That we did hear. Okay, so and I, I just fluffed it off as the kids practicing. Right, but just, but no one admitted to playing no, it. No. Yeah, so that's that's Gertrude, and it's interesting because Gertrude's up here, at age twelve, down here. But when mm -hmm. she's upstairs, she died when she was like nineteen. Right. And she was awfully depressed. Died of consumption. Yeah. They and, called it consumption. I don't know what what that means. <laughs> Typhoid or something. Yeah. Like that. I don't know. And uh, she died uh, in her bedroom, uh -huh. and but she used to. She had all kinds of issues going on, and she should hide in her closet because she felt safe in her closet. She felt like she was controlled, so she'd hide and, and oh. kind of cower in her closet until she mm -hmm. passed on. And she thought of taking her own life numerous times. So she was really yeah, depressed and had mm -hmm. a lot, a lot of stuff going on. Understandable. Now I saw I, I saw her on the third floor, looking at me, Gertrude, again solid. Look, I saw Gertrude, solid as all, all could be, and she's staring at me like, "What are you doing here?" Like she was surprised, like she saw me. She was like, "What you know? Like, what are you doing here?" Now, did your kids ever see anything on the third floor? What made them think that there was a ghost on the third floor? My husband did. My husband thought he did, and I can't. Rem I'm sorry, I can't remember that story. But in in the you know there were glass doors separating. Yes, uh, I still have a, those doors. There was a room up there. Yeah. And something, something supernatural in that room. Yeah, I still I use those doors as as the doorway into the movie theater up there. So I yeah. saved those and uh -huh. we reused those. Yeah, so I know exactly the doors. Well, we were trying to figure out what that room was for up there. With the billiard table? No, with with the doors. Why would they have those doors up there? Oh, well, I don't know. Because there were a couple that was definitely bedrooms. That they would have used for the summer help or whatever to have them right. sleep up there. Yep. Well, it's. I'm, I'm very glad that you're in this house and you're restoring uh, the memories and the because it really has a lot. It does. It's got a life and of its it, own. And it would have been tragic to have it torn down. Well, if I didn't repair it, it would have, it would have just come down on its own. Oh, oh yeah, yes, it would have. Yeah, it would have just come down. <laughs> so I'm trying to think what else we have. We have that. We have, um, did you ever see any, when, when, this is early on, when I'm taking apart like the attic and I'm working on the windmill, I take apart the wood and at night I'd, I'd work on the house. So I'd do my insurance during the day. At night I'd work out in the windmill and I made that a shop. Mm -hmm. And I would look out the window and I would see these little red orbs looking at me. And it would only be out of the corner of my eye. And then when I turned to look at them, and, and the guy who worked for me as well, would both see them at the same time. We'd both turn and look, and they would, they would fly away because we saw them. Wow. Did you ever see any kind of like little, mm -hmm. little orbs or any, any lights that you couldn't explain out, out, no. in, no. out in back or anything like that? No, I didn't. Oh. 
Now, what else do we have? We have, um, what, are, what, are, what other stories do we have? Well, the, my uh, closet. Didn't you think something was uh, Sarah in the closet? Well, that's the voices up in the hallway that her, oh. right, her son and uh, son's girlfriend heard. So that makes sense. But you think it wasn't Warren? No, no, it wasn't Warren. Sarah had a little something on the side. So definitely it wasn't Warren, because Warren t would take trips a lot. Mm -hmm. And there was another person that she confided in. And that's why they would have discussions in secret in the closet. Mm -hmm. So if she didn't want anyone to hear, because that was that cedar closet. So she'd go in there, yes. duck in, and that was kind of her little private meeting area. So she could have her private discussions. And it was big enough that it would hold, you know, two people. Yeah, yeah. comfortably to have a little conversation. Now, did you hear, ever see anything in the tower? Any like anyone ever say that they saw Sarah looking out of the tower or anything like that? Yes. So I did. Yeah. Who would, would people tell you that, or would you have seen her looking out? People would tell me that to see this lady kind of like looking out uh -huh. over over the fields and what right. have you. Right. Yeah. Yeah, because she she hangs out all, all. That's her kind of her place. And I, I think what she needs to think. I had to be friends with her. Yeah. Because you know. I could be spooked completely out of even wanting to live here. No, you could, yeah. You know, but, you know, she wasn't mean. No. She was just, you know, like I said, had a lot of unfulfilled dreams, and mm -hmm. this was, um, you know, you know, it's, well, I have to, this doesn't have anything to do with ghosts, but my son, and the An and Angelo Montrone, they were buddies in school, so they played a joke. And they, I think they had one of the boys something with a camera put a sheet on something. right, but they used a Polaroid or something. Yeah, and then they took two pictures. So I heard about this. They that, they took no. that they took that to like school. a double exposure thing and said, oh, we have a ghost. Here's a picture of it. And yeah, what have they you. took that yeah. to school. Mr. Sanborn, who was the principal then, bless his heart, he's gone. Yeah, I mean, he he literally stopped school for the day yeah. because <laughs> the ghost. You know? yeah. And I think Scott and and Angelo were afraid to say what they'd done. Yeah, <laughs> but so that that wasn't a ghost story. But I mean, you know, but that's how in tune. The town was to things happening over here. Yes, you know? right. Now you caught something. Now yeah. there it is. Here's my yeah. concrete evidence. Right, right. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. Yeah, so that makes that perfect was, sense. That was yeah. it. But um, yes, there are ghosts. Now, the house that I'm restoring in Salt Lake, when they were doing the driveway, they found two big wells. One was very, very primitive, and the other one was very precisely put together. Well, they had to stop the whole procedure and then start digging for bones because if they found bones down there, then they'd have to call the, uh, there was an, an Indian site. Oh, God. They'd have to call, you know, the Indian. <laughs> I thought, oh, no, not six months tied up. Yeah, yeah. They didn't find any bones, but very distinctly, and they took pictures. They said, we've never seen this before, you know, but there were two, but the water would come right down there, and so... Um, it was an Indian burial ground, or it could have been an Indian where the Indians lived, you know. So um, there are all sorts of things, you know, yeah. <laughs> underneath these these old places. So um, I wonder if Warren, you know, they said that he had Sunday meetings with his children, but wasn't a very cohesive father with his family. You mm -hmm. know, he was just, you know. The ambitious man, or she was the ambitious woman. So, I don't think it was too happy of a home when they lived here. Growing no, up. I, I don't think it was too happy at all, and uh -huh. I think it was just they were very. I think they were strict and, and very stern. And very Victorian. Yeah, yeah, very. Uh, you know, it's matter of fact, and almost to the point of well, I think to the point of corporal punishment. Yes. So I really believe that. So yeah. something, something definitely happened in our basement. Or, you know, and that was kind of like the place where you didn't want to go to the basement. No. So if you were going under the kitchen in that basement area, then there was something that was going to happen. That was a punishment area. So there'd be punishment exacted on you. So I feel pretty good with that. 
Now, did you have an out about the windmill? Any stories about the windmill? You talked about the hippies with the hanging thing or whatever, but anything when you were here with the windmill, the kids going in the windmill? Or? Oh, the, the kids went up in the windmill. Uh, I think we stored some things in the windmill. That was actually, we were going to make that into a little home, you know, uh, but we never, we never got to it. Um, I didn't want to go in the windmill by myself, but, you know, I did. <laughs> we had, there was a big well. Did you find that big well in the windmill? Well, it's our water supply. Yeah, yeah, that's your water supply. Yeah. Well, I lowered Dave down that water supply <laughs> with a rope. With a rope. Because he was trying to fix it. Yeah, George has been down there. Yeah. Yes. Let me tell you. Yes. But you, you, you used the crank thing that I was there, the didn't you? crank. That, but the like, thing that's built there, right? I felt like that spool. sometimes I was so mad at him, I felt like letting go of that crank. <laughs> you know the spool that's in there on the, on the thing? Imagine that putting, I mean, I wouldn't for the life of me say, no, I would just, I'll, don't worry, I'll just spool you down on this 100-year-old spool. I thought, <laughs> yeah. why in the world are we doing this? Yeah. Let's hire someone. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. He went down too and just But that's a beautiful well. It's gorgeous down there. Oh, I mean, oh, it brick line. I mean, that was just a gorgeous, gorgeous yeah. well. Yeah. Yeah. So, so you, That's you know, right. you had experiences with the well. <laughs> yeah. yeah. She. Yeah. I said, okay, I'm ready to go up, and she's cranking me down. Oh, I yeah. like it. Yeah. Talk about being helpless. Can we hire to do this? Yeah. Like, life's life's too short. <laughs> yeah. For yeah. yeah. Well, our artesian well went. Yeah. So I had to get another artesian well and then drop it in. Yes, that's yeah. it. And the way that piece of copper was just hanging from the ceiling and everything, so it was, it was very tough. Just, and that rope could have gone any minute. I'm sure. Well, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. Well, they had harnesses and. I bought a crane. It was a tripod. Yeah, yeah. for going down the sewer. I bought the real thing. Uh -huh. So that you could just go down and you know on a piece of, on a cable with a harness and everything. Oh, we did it with so, faith. Yeah, I see that. <laughs> and hope. I wouldn't have done that. <laughs> that was uh, quite a story. I've got to write that up. <laughs> yeah. You know, we well we were the do-it-yourselfers, <laughs> which that's why our boys all live in small homes. <laughs> yeah. They won't touch anything. You know? No, so when you walked in the windmill, but why did you feel uneasy in the windmill? What did you feel like when you walked in the windmill? Well, it was just um, eerie to me, you know, and it was, I don't know, it just seemed to me to have a lot of unknowns, you know, going up those stairs. And we went up, you know, we went up the stairs quite a bit. The kids played in that windmill quite a bit. And it, it was dangerous because it was rickety, you know. Well, the floors were, I mean, the building itself was pretty yeah. solid, but the floors really, I, when I first looked at the house, or whatever, I mean, when I could walk, when I could see, when I was in there, I fell through the floor. And well, I just, you did. You know, just when the boys just let go, and I just went right down. Yeah. I can understand. And I was on the third floor, go, and right, my and leg you, went all the way right through. Boy, you're lucky that you didn't fall. That was, that was high. Yeah. So the windmill now is a home. Well, it's repaired. It's, it's, it's repaired. not really heated. Well, so it's, it's got heated. heat in there, but I don't turn it on. Oh, okay. Yeah. So you you did not make that into a home. Not a, well, not a not a year round home because oh, yeah. there's not there's no way of heating it. Uh huh. Like a regular, I didn't want to put like a regular furnace in there year round. I thought it would kill the ambiance of it. Right. So it's more seasonal. I mean, you could live in the center section of it, but you wouldn't have uh -huh. running water. Uh huh. Because there's no way of heating that up on the other side. It wasn't really designed for that. So it would freeze. So we have to drain the building. Well, I think you've done a wonderful job and very courageous to tackle. Right. <laughs> and Michelle, you very patient. <laughs> you know. Did anyone have any kind of, um, like like Justin, for instance, has had, it's called sleep paralysis. He lives in the in the carriage house. He stays there now, in the, the new building. Uh -huh. uh, and he he's wakes at 3.30 seems to be a magic number here. Things happen at 3.30. Really? And he he would be he'd like be wake up, right? You'd be in like a sweat, a complete sweat, can't move. Okay, he'd hear voices, and he's heard like a, a man and a boy talking, and then they'll walk in. And the little boy walks into his bedroom and is like staring at him from the foot of his bed. And you can't move. And he's paralyzed. He can't he can't move. Oh. He can't move. I can understand that. 
No, but he literally just can't. He's not paralyzed in yeah. fear. He's just literally he's paralyzed. Paralyzed. Yeah. Yeah. Did anyone ever talk about anything like that happening? No, that no one's they had a bad that. dream, or they woke up, or and there was something looking at them. Well, we had some uh, college kids uh, sleep overnight in the barn, and that ended that. It was one night. Yeah. And that was that was the end of that. It wasn't so much maybe uh, a spirit as it was the bats. Oh yeah, yeah. The bats that was just, you know, flying around mm. and uh, it, it sounded very romantic. <laughs> not when, you know, yeah. Not when you have, well, I'm sure that everyone, you know, everyone has a story to tell about Sarah, but I think, I think she must be very pleased at this point. Mm -hmm. Oh, I know she's thrilled. Because she's taken care of her dream. Yeah, well, taking it to the next place, right? So this is, you know, where she stopped. I kind of just kept on right. going. Right. That's going to fix what was, what you know, where she stopped, and then just took yeah. it forward to, you know, because I know yeah. she would have wanted a fountain out in front. I mean, oh, she she would have, oh, and she would have just loved this, you know, this whole thing and the beehives, yep, and the bees coming back to Sunnyside. Now, do you remember the stories about the bees? What were the what was the story about the bees that you heard? Well. <clears throat> I think they left, and then they would come back every spring or something like that. Yeah. And then they got into the walls, where they, and they were very, very heavy. I mean, that, those walls are ready to fall down because of the, the honey that the yeah. bees had put into those walls. So that was, you know, well, we, we just bought the home out of sort of desperation. You know, we didn't even look into where the, where the bees were and, and all of those things. It was, uh, I guess we were a lot younger then. We didn't think. <laughs> but I wouldn't have missed the experience of living here for anything. Oh, that's so nice. Great. And this is where our, our family was raised. And, you know, we, uh, we, we, we loved it. Where did you have your Christmas tree? The Christmas tree was always in the kitchen. Well, because this wasn't heated during no, the winter. This time. wasn't heated. Yeah. So we had it. We had it. Oh no, mainly, mainly we had it in the den, where you have your stuffed animals. Oh, the, yeah. No, that's where we had it. it. Was there, and then the kitchen, and we had that back room. So where do you have your Christmas tree? Right there. Usually, right here. Yeah. 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 Oh, that will be that will be beautiful. It's a little squishy this time. I don't know. Especially this year, it will yeah. be it will be wonderful. So tell me about the piano. Can you play on it at all? No, we haven't had it tuned. <laughs> well, don't so, try. <laughs> but I've heard it. I've heard the sounds, and I know that your tutor is the one, age twelve, making the sounds. Uh huh. So. And I just wanted to have you say that you'd heard the sounds yes. kind of like randomly. Yes. Because I'm sure she's not. She wasn't just playing for me. I'm sure she played for other people as well. Oh yeah. Well, yeah. Poor Gertrude. Yeah, at 19 to have that happen, and uh, you know, probably a very very strict mother, and you know, yeah. be interesting too. But um, now, were any of the kids ever afraid of the basement or anything like that? Did they ever talk yeah. about like not wanting to go in the basement? Oh, our boys were petrified of the basement. Okay. But James and Dave rebuilt the boiler down there. Yeah. So uh, James, our middle son, who you've talked to, yeah, he was the one that was the courageous one. Our oldest son, he's been all day long preparing himself to paint, but he never did. Yeah, we never did. <laughs> and Scott didn't like working for his father, so he biked all the way over to Hampton Beach and worked at McDonald's. <laughs> just so <laughs> just so he doesn't have to go there. So that's funny. <laughs> well, you know, the bats would come out of, you know, we're... The boys were painting up here. It was it was hard work for these, you know. They knew what their summer jobs were. You know? Yeah, yeah. So that was that's funny. So they, so they were really they could feel like they were just like really apprehensive of going down there. Oh oh they oh no. Like I can't no, get my dog down the basement. No one wanted to go down the basement. Yeah. I didn't want to go down yeah, the basement. But it, was, it was awful down there. No, but it beside was, that, but it, it just was, didn't. It just you just didn't oh, feel. Oh, feel was yeah. horrible. Yeah, and then to see that open well. You know. So what happened to the well? I mean, I've been down the basement. No, no, the well's fine. The well's intact. And the well's intact. Yeah, the well's intact. There's now there's a pipe that drains it so it doesn't get too high. Uh -huh. So it just drains out and goes down. Because why the basement was all wet is because the 
water would come up right through the, the collar of the yeah. well. And I think we lowered that little boy down there. <laughs> he could have fallen in that well. But it was amazing how that basement was bricked. Yes. Bricked in. You know, all brick floor. Yeah, we pulled every one and we used them. Is that right? Yeah, so every brick is out of the floor and there's a concrete floor and, we, and we've reused every brick. Oh. Where did you, you reuse the bricks? The front walkway, uh -huh. the back walkway, uh, the windmill, the, the whole floor, that's all brand new brick oh. in the windmill, uh, the fireplace in the kitchen. Well, that was really smart to do that. Oh, you? yeah. yeah we, we, used, uh, we reused everything. So there was nothing that was thrown away that could be mm -hmm. salvaged in any way. Yep. So I saved every piece well, of it. Well, aren't you thrilled, Michelle, that these two rooms are done? Yes. Yeah. Very much. They're, they're lovely. Yeah. Did you take it down the basement or the two rooms? Well, I went down the you basement. You saw the basement before, yeah, said, right? It was all yeah. finished, right? Oh. It was all dry and it was poured. Yeah. Yeah. It's great. Yeah. Yep. So, no, that's interesting. You, you felt the same thing because I, I really oh, yeah. felt like if back when this house was built that you did something bad, you got sent to the basement. Probably, probably and did. That was like the whipping room or whatever. I mean, you yeah. got a, you got your punishment in the basement. Yep. Go to the basement. I'll meet you down there. <laughs> yeah. So that's. Yeah. So you picked up like in, in the same thing. Same. Uh, I work out there every morning, so I guess that's my punishment. <laughs> yeah. I have to go down there and work out. Well, at least you're working. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I have no choice. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, so what else? What else do we have? We have. Um, I'm trying to think. The footsteps. Go, any footsteps you've ever heard? Like random footsteps? Or? Oh, all the time. All the time with the random footsteps. Yeah. yeah. Okay. That was just common. Not that was crazy. exactly just exactly. Yeah, because we get. I mean, yeah. I've had that. I don't know how many times you uh -huh. just you hear these footsteps and yeah. there's yeah, no one. Funny because I don't hear anything. You don't hear. No. I don't understand why. I don't hear anything. Justin, you hear the footsteps and. I think this house is. You hear the marbles. So quiet. So yeah. quiet. Yeah. Justin says had a share of experiences and heard the boy and seen the boy and, so and what does else? Does it make you nervous? Oh, tell, tell her about your experience with the windmill. I was doing the floor in the windmill, all the brick, I was laying the brick down. <clears throat> then we had taken down the, the stairs, the, the stringers to the, go down from the second floor to the main floor because we were repositioning and doing, and I had to do the floor. So there's no stairs from the first floor to the second floor, so you can't get up there. And it was oh. like, this was the second job for me, so it was like 7 o'clock at night. Uh -huh. And I was, you know, going to town, and all of a sudden I hear these, these footsteps like walking up the stairs and down the stairs and up the stairs and down the stairs from like the second to the third floor, thinking of like trying to get down, but they couldn't get down, you know, to come down to the bottom floor. And I called George, and I... I had told him that I would, I'm all done. I didn't, I didn't really want to work here anymore, and it, that kind of <laughs> freaked me out. And go shut the lights off, because I'm not going back yeah. in there and shut the lights off. Yeah. So, that was it. Yeah. 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 But I got over it. He's but a lot. Right no. But a lot of the best stories have come out of the windmill, the experiences, because oh, yeah. they've been the most just, just amazing experiences well, coming I, out of the windmill. I better meet Sarah. And some of the hoodlums are around town, you know. Yeah. At least Sarah's friendly and nice. And, yeah. You know, and so. Yeah, no, she's very appreciative of everything. Yeah. You know, I think she, I think she feels bad for whatever happened to that little boy, and that's kind of her, yep. her penance, and she kind of is aligned with the little boy wanting uh -huh. to get it out because I think at the time she was powerless to stop right. what took place because she was the housewife. Yeah. So she kind of just stood back, knew something wrong had taken place, and oh. now was just uh, in torment because yes. she didn't speak up when she was alive. And That's I think she's true. just consumed with that, that makes, knowledge. That makes sense. Yeah. 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 Did so, Christine you know about the dollhouse? The oh, doll yeah, I did. I did see the dollhouse. Oh, did you go to the... Oh, you saw it when, when it was... Uh, when, at, at the library. Oh, yeah, you also, saw it. I saw it when it was first built. Okay. Down at the Susan Cornwall or something like that. Yeah. Uh, now, does this fireplace work? Yes, we just repaired it. That was last winter. Oh, that was good. We repaired it, not this this winter or last winter? No. The winter before? Yeah, the winter before. The winter before, because it was it was settling into the ground. The, see the uh -huh. cracks? Right. And it opened up about three-quarters of an inch. 
so the whole thing had settled. Uh -huh. So we pushed up the floor and pushed that up before we could do this floor. Oh, so I now see. it's all now it's all one piece again. Oh, yeah, it's it's settled and you know part of it stood on the wall and part of it didn't sit all on the wall. So the one upstairs was last square. Well, that's the last one. Yeah, the one in the bedroom, the front bedroom. Was that one there? No. They'd covered that up, I guess. Yes, we put it back. Uh-huh. Yeah. Now you have the one in your office. Right, which I haven't put a new chimney in that one. Uh -huh. That needs a new chimney. So I never used that one. Uh -huh. But this one's got the new chimney and it's fine. The one in the living and the dining room is the same thing. Yeah, that's a nice fireplace. Yeah. So they're both and that we changed the fireplace. Did you see that? In the in the dining room? In the dining room, it's all brand new, all oh, different. Oh, I didn't realize that. I yes. thought that was the old one. Wasn't no. that white too? No, no the old no, one was no, that gray, kind of like just yeah. straight, oh. almost contemporary looking. Oh, yes. Yeah. Right. Was it so. a pink? I don't know what it was. Yeah. Maybe gray, it pink. Had pink shades. Yeah. Maybe it had pink Yeah, stone. but it was just like regular slabs of stone, uh -huh. straight, yeah. no, no texture, no design, no nothing. Yeah. Yeah, it was very contemporary looking. It was a nice fireplace, but uh -huh. just not. Well, who do you think put that in? I don't know. It has to have been done. It wasn't done by Sarah. No. That had been done after. So someone during the 1950s or 60s. Mm -hmm. So it would have been the, probably the family before well, you. You probably have pictures. Do you have pictures of these rooms? Not the dining room. I, if I do, I'll send. If I have one, I will. An original before your time, before you came? Uh-huh. Yeah. I'll be sure you get one. I'll be sure to send it to you. I'll send anything for I can. Copies, yeah. you know, don't, well, if you want to keep them, uh, send copies. With what, with what you've done, you deserve to have every living thing about this house. <laughs> 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 you do. You do. Yeah. Yeah. A woman just contacted us that has oh, yeah, she's got a, a bed that was in the Dutch room, is what they called it. Uh -huh. Yeah, which I think is, is the Dutch room Zach's room? Well, she doesn't know which one's that. What's the Dutch room? Do you know? Well, the Dutch room is the room by the bathroom. Yeah, that's that's room. That yeah, that's what I thought. That was blue. That was... Yes. Right. Uh -huh. And she has a, a rocking chair, a cane, and I don't know how she has it. Her name is Suzanne. What was that name? Suzanne Cornwall. No, that's no, perfect. That's that's the... She's right. dead. This Remember? was a different Suzanne. So, or something. Yeah. Uh, we don't know how she has this. Bed. They refinished it and whatever. Yeah, but she wants yeah. to sell it to us. Hmm. And she's out in California. Oh, really? Yeah, so she brought How the message. How did she hear about it? Through the article in the paper? Yeah. Right, her mother read the article in the paper. Yeah. And so her mother lives in this area. And her mother fills her in as to the uh, fixing of this house and always uh -huh. always talk about it. And uh -huh. When so she comes home, she always drives she by. We need to find out who she is and how she's related. How does she get yeah. it? Yeah, that would be interesting. But it's amazing how many people I talk to that say well, that when they come Sarah, home, they come Sarah, by the, yeah, by the Sarah house. Sarah passed away in that room, in the Dutch room. That's what they're talking about. <clears throat> That's, that was her last place. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. I don't know. So she's never in there, though. That's interesting. Yeah. Well, maybe that's why Zach doesn't come out. You know, he just locks himself in there. <laughs> so I don't know. There's some reason why my son doesn't, he doesn't, he shuts his door. And, A lot of kids do. That's not unusual. But his room is hot as hell too, all the time. And we don't have the heat. We don't have the heat on, and his room is hot as hell. It's as hot as it's, really? right? the room is hot. Yeah, hot, hot. I don't know, folks. <laughs> too complicated. But it it's. I mean, you can go on and on and on. But when these things happen to you, you know that you know it does happen. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, we see it at our seances. So you should, I would it's love. It'd be great if you came back. Maybe the you know, maybe, the March one. Or, maybe maybe in March. So just yeah, because I think I'm I'm going to sell that little place in Hampton. I just have too many things on my plate right now. Mm -hmm. you know, I've got the the mm -hmm. home in Salt Lake, and yeah. then the other home I'm trying to sell in Salt Lake, and then I have a little cabin in Yellowstone, and you know That's this a thing. Lot. Too much stress. Yeah. <laughs> Concentrate on one thing. <laughs> yes. Oh, definitely. One day at a time. One yeah. thing at a time. Yeah. So, uh, well, I'm just thrilled at what, what, our, what our progress is. Well, I think your progress is outstanding, you know. And Dave would have been so thrilled, too, to see this living room. Mm -hmm. We never hardly sat down in this living room because it no. was, it was, 
togetherness like this. I yeah. mean, even though this house is is magnificent, this is very cozy. You know, yes, to have but for a long time we felt that same way. Like we didn't have, we had couches in here, but uh -huh. it never felt cozy yeah. or warm. Right. And just we finally made that happen. But it it was. Well, I know what you mean. It. It feels still sort of like a cultural hall. Yeah. I mean, oh, you're saying I can uh, muscle in or something yeah. like that. Yeah. You it know, mortuary. <laughs> exactly, yeah. I know, I felt that too. So, uh, so this is fun. Well, do your friends, are they, do they all think you're crazy or are they thrilled for you? Uh, there's a mixed bag there. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, yeah, everyone because thinks everybody I'm crazy. in town, they'd say, when am I going to get to see inside the house? And I'd say, next year, next, next year. year. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> and then 12 years later, I finally had my girlfriends over. But I have people in town that said, I've never been in your, I've been in your kitchen. That's the only room I've ever been in. Or they'll say, I've never seen inside your house. And well, I've never seen inside this. I know. So, <laughs> so, <laughs> so. No, but... <laughs> No, these are right? people I've been in their homes. Uh -huh. You haven't. Yeah. You know, I've never seen your wife naked. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, what kind of, kind of statement is that? No, these are people I've been in their homes, I'm yeah. saying. And they said, oh, we've never seen your house. So it's not a trade. Know. It's not like a swap off. You're going to mind if I go to yours. You don't but a lot of people them. feel that way. Women do, don't they? Oh, do they? <laughs> yeah. One woman came to the house. This was years ago. Remember Bonnie? She said, oh, let me come in and see. I said, no, no. you can't come in. <laughs> I wouldn't let her come in. I was like, no, we, we're under construction. Yeah, when we first moved in, some guy came to the front door and he goes, you mind if I come in? I've always wanted to look inside. Oh, aren't people crazy? It was oh, like, yeah. no. Constantly. <laughs> well, it was just I'm like, sure I'll never forget that. that. to you, too, yeah. they wanted to see. Oh, yes. Yeah. Oh, and I can't tell you how many people like to pull up my driveway. Up. Dressing up like a ghost. Just you know. <laughs> Oh, yes, come in. Ah! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and then the whole town would know they don't have to come back. Right. <laughs> Take the guesswork out of it. Right. Yeah. Oh, people are so mm. crazy. Oh, yeah. No matter where you live, they're crazy. Yeah. That's funny. I'm still thinking about Mr. Sanborn, like basically shutting down the school when they oh. did the. Yeah, that was Angela we, and Scotty. We, yeah, we had him over once, but I don't think we let him see the inside. I did have him over. I brought him over. It was during a school thing. I brought him in the windmill, Mr. Sanborn. Oh, yeah. Oh, Mr. Sanborn. Yes, because I wanted to show him I have an antique tool collection in the windmill. And I wanted him to see that. I thought he'd get a kick out of that. So He was a nice man. Oh, yeah. Yes, but he's, his Alzheimer's started setting in yeah. for, for a while. So mm -hmm. you could see it was there was a struggle for him to just trying to keep, keep together. Oh, I know. <laughs> the kids took advantage of him. He was always so nice. They always said that. He would throw their papers on one step, and those that got on one step got A's, and those that <laughs> went on another step got B's. And, you know, they, they didn't do too much. That's he funny. taught them a lot besides reading and writing. Yeah, definitely. You know, it wasn't that much. But his life, his, Sanborn, his life was that school, you could tell. Oh, it was. Yeah, he was, was completely dedicated to that school. That was, that was, his, that was his life. Yeah. That, that and trains. And he, mm -hmm. loved, he loved trains. Yes. Well, yeah. I love this rug. You know, <laughs> this rug is absolutely ties everything together. It's yeah. wonderful. All handmade. And uh, where does it come from? Afghan? Not Afghanistan. Pakistan. Really? Pakistan. Oh. It took seven people one year to make. Seven yeah. people one year. Imagine that. Did Did you design it, or did you just? No. No, no, no we just bought yeah. it. Yeah. But it had all the colors, which is not yes. a traditional rug, because they don't use a lot of these colors. We were just very fortunate well, right. to find like well, the oranges rooms, and the. It's got all the Victorian colors, mm -hmm. and then you know you pick up the walls, the colored mm -hmm. walls. Yeah, it's wonderful. This is great, and I, I love these blinds. Yeah, and this is. No, and the curtains. Yeah, we had those designed for here. Those are the, I those are the two colors of the of the paint on the walls. I love that. So the alternating stripes. Oh, I see. I love that. Yeah. Great. So everything kind of like just comes together. Well, that's wonderful. Well, I'll let you get back to your duties, but thank you for well, thank letting you. me come yeah. and share some memories. I would love that. So now it's saved. Now we're gonna have it, and hopefully we have 
good yeah. footage that we can uh, can save, and it'll be on a website. I'll, I'll you know when oh, when you call me, I'll let, I'll share it with you, and you, okay, you great. can share it with your sons and everything, I, and they I can see. I have your address. You still have the same address. I will. I will be up the street. So let me give you my new one. Yeah, because I want to let you know when we're having. And I I want to know about this uh, ghost this ghost show. Yeah. Yes, yeah, so I think it's in two weeks. Two weeks. Well, it could be in three weeks. It's either two or three weeks. And Wednesday night on Sci-Fi. Oh, sci-fi, sci-fi. 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 Yeah. Sci-fi. Actually, let me take a look. Okay. I emailed them actually, and uh, I'm just waiting to hear back. Well, let's see if we have any anything from him from the show, because they love the show. It's one of the best episodes they've had. They said they were thrilled with what they got here. Oh, thrilled. Isn't that great? Yeah, thrilled. So a lot of the stuff I told them, the footsteps, the voices, uh -huh. uh, the sounds, the windmill, like we've been up in the windmill, and the windmill scares me. It's the only part of the property really? that scares me. Nothing else scares yeah, do me. Do you think it's because you fail? No, mm -hmm. no, 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 no. I think there's a, there's a, there's a male in there, there's a, there's a male spirit. He's, he ran the property, uh -huh. and he kind of, that was his domain, where it was kind of like his workshop, right. his, his area, and he didn't like women. He kind of really took control over women and had uh -huh. his way with women and some in, in that windmill. So it, women, forget it. If you're on the second, third, yeah. or fourth floor, you can really feel the energy uh -huh. of what's going on. And you get you, yourself stressed out. And some of this, I mean, the stuff we've heard, and I'll be walking out, we'll be in there, and you'll hear bangs and the footsteps and, and all that. And we had a ghost hunting team over a few weeks ago. And they did the, the uh, you know, have you ever watched the show for ghost hunting? Mm -hmm. yeah, well, one of the people put a flashlight on the window on the third floor and told the ghosts, I'm going to walk outside the building so there's no one in the building. I'm going to walk outside, uh -huh. and when I raise my hands, turn the flashlight on. When I put my hands down and across my chest, shut the flashlight off. So there's a video camera on the flashlight right on the windowsill so you can see no one's touching it. There's other video cameras on the building and on him. Okay, so there's plenty of video coverage. He walks out. And he, he goes, okay, I'm outside the building. Uh, you know, I'm, on the count of three, I'm going to raise my hands over my head, turn the flashlight on. He goes, one, two, three, turn the flashlight on. And on the third floor, you see the flashlight turn on. Oh no God. one's around it. And he goes, okay, on the count of three, I'm going to take my hands down and cross my chest. Three, two, one. My hands are across my chest, shut the light off, boom. And it goes off. On command. He did that three times in a row. Oh my word. It was unbelievable. And no one was around. No one was around. You should you would not have believed there were about a I don't know, maybe fifteen of us outside watching it. Oh. It was it was amazing. It was like someone was hiding up there. Yeah, that would convince me. Pushing pushing the button on command. It was amazing. And oh. then later that night we felt something come past us. It was like a cold, thick kind of energy, it was kind of mass. This if was it, in the window. This was in the windmill, but you felt it kind of like, it was like icy cold. Uh -huh. It was like the door was open and a cold breeze came through, but it was kind of like a cone of, of a breeze. It was really, but the door was shut. You felt it come across, it hit, it, I felt it, a, a woman in there felt it, another woman in there felt it, another gentleman felt it, another, so it hit all of us, but all separately. Uh -huh. And one of the guys goes, something's here, I can feel it, you know, can you give us a message? And he had a tape recorder, kind of like that. And he's got other recording devices. And he says, says, you know, we can feel you. Can you give us a sign? Can you say something? And then he goes, I got something. And he plays it back. And you hear clear as day, they can feel us. So there was more than one spirit or entity in there, and they were talking to each other. So they can feel us, meaning us could feel them. So there's more of one. And it was clear as day to hear that. It was amazing, the experience. I still can't get, I still can't get past that. Because it was just to witness it firsthand. Is that going to be on the show? No. That's what we caught just a couple weeks ago. But it was so clear that it was like fake. If I let you listen to it, you'd say, oh, that's fake. Of course it's fake. You wouldn't even think twice about the fact that it was fake. It would be that clear. They'd be like, no way that that's real because it's too clear. Uh -huh. And it was absolutely clear. No, no nothing. Perfect voice. Right there. They can feel us. Wow. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And that, those are the kind of things that really change you yes. when there's no way that, you know, the brain, you witness the whole thing and you know that there's no way that he could have altered it for any reason. 
because of the just we right there, fresh, firsthand. I really feel their spirits all around us. Yeah. You know, 